me, Father, for I have sinned. This is my first confession. Oh, what are your sins, my son? Do you know who I am? No, don't, don't tell me. <laughs> well, my name is Titus Browning Shearwater, inventor of technologies, composer of musics, uh, artist of arts, uh, healer of diseases, winner of... <laughs> Should have told you. <laughs> <laughs> what a dream my life has been, Father, that this now pain and tortured form should here collapse in penance, should prostrate itself in utter agony and beg. <laughs> Would you like a glass of water? <laughs> Mine was not always such a mangled state, Father. There was a time, once, before my fame, my fortune and success, my millions of dollars, when I was but a humble, handsome, stupid boy. <laughs> Yo, Titus, um, I'm going to work. Put them toys away and go take care of your stepdaddy. Oh, but <laughs> Ma, we're all out of crack. <laughs> Joe, talk back to me. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> oh, to relive those halcyon days of the 1980s. <laughs> if only I could but go back and tell myself to treasure the innocence of youth. Oh, where is the crack? <laughs> I would sacrifice my years of luxury in a simple hot meal. In my cornflakes! But alas, I was not satisfied with the life of quiet solitude. Crack and spoon feedings. I wanted more. But where could I find it? Save me, Satan. Satan? But it was not Satan who heard my call. No. It was a genie. A mystical jinn from the darkest orient who sensed my distress and flew to me with fire on his footsteps. <laughs> uh, fire, I say. <laughs> That's a fire. Titus, so, uh, shush! <laughs> Do not despair. I, a genie, have heard your prayer. Also, this genie spoke in rhyming couplets. <laughs> my existence is worthless, genie. My stepdad's a crackhead, my mom's an abusive whore. With no education or marketable skills, how am I ever going to escape this oppressive life? Your father, tis just to abhor. Your mother, yes, she is a whore. Right. But, my Titus, I can aid with but a small price to be paid. Oh, I'll do whatever it takes, genie. Okay. <laughs> Wisdom, a genius, uh, these I offer, plus what riches they may offer, you'll find more than a little bliss if you contract the syphilis. Ah, uh, uh, syphilis? Isn't that like some kind of uh, disease? Indeed, it may sound bad, but look at all of those who have had it. <laughs> Chaplin, Monet, Vincent Van, Tolstoy, Wilde, and Schumann, Washington, Columbus, Nietzsche too, and Napoleon, to name a few. Wow! All those people had syphilis? Their lives are yours, this I decree, if you acquire that, uh, S-T-D. <laughs> well, you're the genie genie. <laughs> Give it to me. But it was not so simple. The genie could not infect me. All jinn kind are immune to all mortal affliction. 
Hasn't quite sure, you know, Father. No! He was to be but a Sherpa on my path. I would have to climb the mountain myself. Not far away, a lady high. She can help me? Well, some call her crazy, some prophetic. This much is true, she's syphilitic. <laughs> and so I set forth to find my Prometheus. I don't know if you recall, Father, but the 80s was an age of uncertainty, when perhaps any woman on any city block may have been the one I sought. Hey there, big boy. Shouldn't you be in there? Well, my stepdad's a crack and my mom's uh, irresponsible. <laughs> Looks like you need some discipline. Whoa. <laughs> 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 All right. Not <laughs> Yeah, sure. Hey, by the way, do you have syphilis? <laughs> would not stay my lust. No, I vowed with untarnished spirits to persevere until at last I met the dame herself. <laughs> Do you, um... I've been waiting. <laughs> Did the genie say uh, you... Shh. Come closer. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Oh, boy. Whoa. <laughs> Never before had my young body felt such thrill. Like a seaman into a tempest, she took me without mercy. And all at once I was subject to the acutest pain and sublimest pleasure. She drove me from ice to fire and back to ice again. spoke the five words that have kept my ear ringing these past twenty odd years. You'll want to see a doctor. Triumph! <laughs> Never had my mouth tasted so sweet, nor my blood surged so surely through my veins. The world was sharper, every sound crisper, every sense stronger. It was as if the very voice of God was whispering directly into my ear. So certain was I of what to do with my life. I cut off my ear. I gouged out my eye. I severed every human connection I had ever made. <laughs> then I got busy. Your book sales are through the roof, Mr. Shearwater. And that one's a new exhibit by Christmas. The other pets need a new opera by Easter. That internet you invented? Oh, everyone loves it. Oh, <laughs> and Stephen Hawking's called. Oh, he needs you to pass Jack's next book. We told him he's busy curing cancer. <clears throat> but you'll get right on it first thing in the morning. And the telegraph needs a quote. <laughs> what do you think of war? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Maybe we should get a doctor. Oh, I am a doctor. <laughs> Mr. Shearwater, I think you might be sick. All oh, things must come to an end, Father. And I realize this. At the very pinnacle of my career, and with no small pang of regret. What good is genius if its time is fleeting? What end could I pursue if all my works are doomed to impermanence? I resolve, therefore, that I must serve mankind with more than just my intellect. Cronies! Yes, Mr. Shearwater. I must offer up my seed as well. Bring me with her and so many came, Father. One woman per day. Day after day. Year after year. We pay each woman to carry the child to term and never to divulge the father. Whether she raised it. It's up to her. But this I know. I have over 7,000 offspring. <laughs> oh, what a head I have, Father. But is it really hubris to hope that I Titus Browning Shearwater could foster a new generation of myself, thereby ensuring the perpetuations of my works. To conclude that if the disease be genetic, so must be the genius! <laughs> Not a day goes by when I don't open the times and wonder if the headlines concern my sons, my daughters. Never a day passes when I don't hobble down the street searching for myself in the faces of passers-by, hoping, praying, that all my work has not been in vain. Father! <laughs>